This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett, and this is the Ramble. Wait, no, let me do this so you can see my eyes. These old, tired eyes of mine. That's for all the people who are watching on Facebook uh, and watching us on Facebook Live, which uh, I don't know if there's very many of you right now, but uh, it'll probably, now there isn't very many of you out there. Oh, well, fuck you. Maybe I'll stop showing the video. Only thing is, that for the next uh, oh, 25 minutes or so, we actually have a video. Uh, and so for those people who go over to, Gab, uh, to Facebook Live forward slash A Bennett, you'll be able to see uh, a video. Uh, we went on vacation last week to uh, Vermont. I should be wearing my Vermont t-shirt, but I'm not. Uh, and uh, we had a nice time. So I went up there with my, uh, with my uh, 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 what do you call it, GoPro and my, and my Steadicam thing they've got called uh, a Karma Grip. And uh, I, I shot some of that vacation. So I thought I would just uh, show you the video I threw together just for this show. I haven't thrown this together as a presentation. And at certain points, I might talk about it a little bit when there's uh, no real audio going on. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are listening to us as an audio program, we'll be completely audio in about 25 minutes from right now. But let's go back about a week and a half and go to JFK Airport. your stuff what would you do I wouldn't do it I wouldn't go through it right. she got her stuff confiscated tell them what they confiscated first of all this travel bag I've had for 20 some years and in it are two Swiss Army knives and a wine bottle opener they took both all three of those and chucked them and then a gift for Adrian and Charlie, which was oil and vinegar set. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me two people and I see two people and I'm like... <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. Or are you just going to take them for three? <laughs> oh, thank you. So you got all your stuff confiscated. All my stuff, I want to take a picture. Of what? My empty bag. Oh, oh that's the, uh, the ribbon. I said, let me just have that. Here we are in Burlington, Vermont. just a beautiful place and it was uh, was created by Edward Olmsted the guy who did Central Park 
and it is a working farm. That's two and a half yeah, miles. Probably. If you go to to the water, it's three miles. Wow. It's, that's that's round trip. Yeah. Two and a half miles round. Trip. It's just beautiful up here. Oh, it is. You know, and just and just look at the expense. And this is a treasure. Yeah, yeah. And it's a it's a foundation. It's a, in the yeah, national this is this is. Uh, What's the farms they call it? Shelburne Farms. Shelburne Farms. And it was it was designed by the same guy that did Central Park. That's right. He, he did all the uh, architectural uh, uh, work on it. And the, yeah. it was uh, developed by the Webbs and the Vanderbilts. Yeah. Dr. Webb, who married into the family, accumulated mm -hmm. 3,000 acres, of which they have about 1,000 left. Yeah. The rest of it they had to sell off over the years Why? to support it, to pay the taxes. And, and so they turned it into a, a foundation. Uh -huh. And now the Webbs, Alec and his brother are the president, vice president. They do the operations and they have a very strong board of directors. Right. They have a very nice endowment. Yeah. They constantly are accumulating additional properties if they can. Yeah. and upgrading what they have. Wow. And the beautiful. mission yeah. is it's an environmental farm and they teach children the meaning of, of, of um, the environment yeah. and, and how farms work and hello, how are you? Oh boy, Boston Yeah. <laughs> And so they they have a conference center. They have a lot of conferences. Yeah. Both here and and uh, worldwide. Yeah. And teach taking their story and that's how to run a farm through and protect the environment at the same, same time. time. Wow. So. Uh, and this is a was put into the inn and I think the entire thousand acres is part of the National Registry. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's quite a thing to have. Museum. It's not your traditional museum. Like this is just an art gallery. Okay, just an art gallery. Look at the art in this thing. Creme brulee. Look at that. That's all ice cream. of an exhibit of confectionery art. 
Now, I suppose there are other art uh, shows there, but at this particular time, they were doing stuff that was nothing but confectionaries. Look at these. By the way, only a few of the things in this display are edible, and they're made by a chocolate company in the area. But outside of that, this is just nothing but food art. All right, Zephyrs, we can meet you at that fence right there. What is this, the Ticonderoga? Yeah. And what is the Ticonderoga? You never heard of it? It's a I've, big ship. No, that I've heard to... of the pencil. Is it a pencil? There's a pencil called the Ticonderoga's most famous yellow pencil around. Oh, I never knew that. If you ever looked on the side of it, it says Ticonderoga. No, oh, I always thought it was yellow. So what is this, a giant pencil? This is a giant pencil that yeah. used to be in the river. I mean, they had all that stuff in the chocolate museum, so, you know. Look, the leaves are turning. I've never seen this in my life. Just gorgeous. Fancy schmancy, huh? Look at that. Look at that woodwork. I mean, just amazing. And they completely restored the ship. Of course, I wouldn't want to put it in the water. It might leak. In case you just joined us, we're uh, showing you videos we shot on our vacation to Vermont about a week ago. Yes, you come here, you stay for the talk, but you get the home movies. Here's an old New York Times. And now we go to the top of the ship, and this is just wonderful up here. steamboat and if you look closely as we pass by it you will see the steam drives the pistons and so on and that drives the wheel of the uh, of the steamboat now we'll go on to the rest of the uh, of, of uh, the Shelburne Museum and all these things, each individual one, are like, uh, you know, buildings that they brought in. And then those buildings are turned into museums. And there are, I don't know, maybe 20 of them? I don't know how many. The couch. A place I can, I can relax. <laughs> Recharge, it says. Recharge. 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 Right, we're going upstairs. Okay, you go upstairs.
wind, by the way. It was very windy up there, as you can see and hear. See in a moment that you push a little red button and make the train set. So you can make the train run. Press either of the red buttons. Yeah, these are mechanical bags. There we go. So reconstruct it. The actual complete. train they got here with the train station. Yeah, they've done a whole train station, complete with the train.
or sell. I mean, it, it, people come literally from all over the country to come to this museum. It's the big round barn, right? And look at this. This is a oh, look at this hearse over here. Yeah. This is not fun. Very short people. What is that? Goes down a snow covered slope with eight to ten people and it's like a gigantic sled. Wow. early minivan? Yeah, that's how they describe it. If the soccer mom was around that day, they would have loved that. Wow, look at the size of this. Fancy. There's also a circus museum here, which we didn't have time to go see. I mean, spectacular. Ooh, it's really cold today. Whew. Charlie was putting in a, uh, he, he, he put in a, a uh, what do you call it, a pier, a kind of an aluminum pier, and for the winter, because everything gets so icy, uh, he has to take it all down, and so he has to hire four burly yeah, guys getting, to take it's it. It's getting to be that time of year, folks. To take it out of the water, and it's freezing, and watch them, they're wearing shorts. It's getting cold. Yeah. So, oh, they already got part of it. They already got part of it done. What they're going to do is they'll lift the bank. Pull yeah. up with some ropes over yeah. here. Oh, they got wheels on them. Yes, they got. So they can roll it. The idea is, the idea is that wheels have, plastic wheels have holes in them. Yeah. And as you roll it out into the water, yeah. they fill up with, the wheels fill up with water, and, and it makes it stable. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and it, and it uh, so we have... Are they bringing it over this? Yeah, they would lift it up over the bank. And we have four sections, 15 feet each, so we have 60 oh, feet of yards. back inside. It's freezing out here. Huh? Yeah, this is too cold for me. Oh, man. Oh. Isn't this a beautiful house, huh?
have golf on it right near the golf course, do they? nice weekend and we're on our way back to New York yeah and it's always great seeing them yeah just very good people to me and that's it that's our little uh, that's our little uh, trip to uh, to uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed my home movies <laughs> that was our trip to uh, uh, to, to Vermont and uh, um, I got to tell you, if, you're, if you ever get to that part of the country, you have got to go up and see the Shelburne Museum. I mean, th that is one of the most amazing things that I've ever had the privilege to, to, to see. And I really, I really, really loved it. And uh, I want to go back because there's a circus museum I did, we didn't get to have time to see. And you probably would have enjoyed seeing. But I hope you get an idea of uh, what it, why it's so nice. And thanks to Charlie and, um, and uh, she has, I'm trying to remember her nickname, Belle. Uh, I'm trying, she has a nice nickname, so I like using the nickname. Uh, her name is Belle, and Charlie and Belle for putting up with us. And, and being such, just every time we go up there, they are just superb when it comes to being hosts, okay? Well, our lines are open now, and uh, it's time for you to call. Uh, and uh, our, uh, our numbers are uh, all on the gabnet.net site. Uh, you can call us by phone. There's a phone number there at gabnet.net. And there's also, you can, uh, if you have Skype, just Skype us at Gabnet Live. That's our ID, Gabnet Live. And so this is the part of the program where I sit here waiting for people to call because the lines are open. I got to tell you, I, I, you know, if I had some other place other than here to live, well, if I had another place to live, or if I could get that, if I could extricate myself from New York City, Vermont would be the place I'd love to live. I mean, it is it is just so gorgeous. And yes, I know the winters come and they're a bit unforgiving and they. There's a lot of snow and things like that, but I don't mind that, you know. Uh, I, 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 what I do like is just the, 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 the lifestyle up there is, is so calm and so collected and people don't look like they're pressured. And it, it's really very, very nice. And I, uh, again, thanks to Belle and, and Charlie for, for t taking us in. <laughs> Uh, the immigrants from the big city. Right now, though, on the phone, uh, finally a phone. I'm still using old terms like phone, right? Uh, hello, Jeff. How are you? Good. This is uh, this is Jeff Stein. He's the first to call tonight. Um, did you get to see any of that of Vermont? Yeah, I did. It's I, wonderful, isn't it? I know. You know, I remember that ship. Mm -hmm. Morning. You remember when it was in the water. That's right. And I was like a teenager at the time. Yeah. And uh, I remember that thing went by. Maybe I even got on it once. Yeah. It was a long, long time well, ago. It, it, it was a, it, some of the trips it took were long enough that they had those staterooms for people to sleep in, you know, which is uh, kind of uh, really, you know, but I mean... Uh, the, the train, uh, what was interesting on the train was they actually had a toilet and a, wa a bathtub and a wash basin and a toilet in that one stateroom on the train. Mm. You know, well, people know how to travel in the, if you, you, because there's so much traveling by slow conveyance that okay. they made it a pleasure, you know. It sounded in the background uh, when you were showing the train. It sounded like there was a train whistle, ever so faint. No, was, no, 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 no train whistle. But uh, uh, right, did the picture look good out where you were watching this? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know uh, that that camera, that GoPro, is an amazing camera, and with that, uh, with that. Um, um, Karma grip I have, which is like a steady cam. The, the the video is very smooth. 
Did you uh, fix the uh, on-off thing? I got it pretty well working okay. Good. Uh, uh, so, uh, but it, 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 you know, it, 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 otherwise if you walk with them, even though they have a stabilizer in them, there's a certain jitteriness. This is a smoothness that you can glide. It's almost like gliding. It's amazing. You can take them underwater. You can, uh, you know, it's, there's nothing you can't do with those things. Well, what they created it as was a sport camera. In other words, for yeah. people who wanted to put it on a bike when they were biking, or they wanted yeah, to, action. you know, take it scuba diving. I have a underwater uh, rig here for it if I ever wanted to yeah. use it. Yeah, um, mine too. Yeah, and uh, it really is an amazing camera because the quality. Uh, I mean, I don't shoot at 4K because it uses up way too much space on the on the card, and I'm. And uh, so I, I, I shoot at uh, 1080p, and it's still, it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Hi there, Rob. Hello. Did you watch any of the video? I did not. Oh, I, yeah, see, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to see what you thought if you did. It's no big deal that you didn't. You can always go back and watch it the on the replay. The whole thing was a put-down to the Yankees. The whole thing. The whole thing was a put-down to the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, um, did you notice they were playing baseball last night in fog? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't see the. Oh, you didn't watch the game. Yeah. You're, 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 you're a. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Last night it was in Los Angeles, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I watched uh, an inning or two in the beginning, and it was beautiful. It was ninety degrees out. What oh, kind of fog? I, I was told there was fog. Uh, it could have been smog, but uh, uh, it, it, the sky was blue. It, it, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, there we go. um, and I think it was either 90 or 103. Oh, it wow. was a very hot Maybe day. I was watching Jimmy Kimmel. Maybe he was joking about there being fog and that he uh, superimposed yeah. fog over it. Fake news. See, well, no, no. <laughs> Late night yeah. comedy. That's what it is. But then again, you Republicans have no sense of humor. Yeah. Or, or uh, if the jokes that you tell are any indication, that's for damn sure. Uh, let it, me see here. Here comes Kevin um, this evening. Uh, it, it, the sky was blue. Uh, 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 oh, Kevin, your audio no, is on. John. We hear you. Yeah, you can turn it on. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was watching Jimmy Timmons. There we go. Yeah, he, he stopped it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. It's okay. Yeah, the fog was at the uh, football game. Oh, the football game. That's what he was showing. Uh, what, what was the football game? Uh, it was in New England, and you could barely see across the field. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fog game number two, I guess. They had one many years ago at the Bears. Very famous. Chicago, game. yeah. Yeah. So how do you play if you can't see the other team? Carefully. Yeah, you can see. It's mostly the... The TV that couldn't see. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I was just wondering what the, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, what I've was going played, on there. I've, huh? I've played softball in the fog, and it's pretty interesting. <laughs> That's got to be you see it go up, scary. Yeah, when you uh, hit it up in the air and you're on the outfield and you're going, okay, it's going to come out somewhere. Yeah. Or in dry. <laughs> <laughs> and you hope you're uh, See, close, I'm but not a, too can, close. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I uh, I'm in in somewhat of pain tonight. Uh, you know, I've had this this torn meniscus, right? And it's been fine. You know, it acts up a little bit when the weather changes, but I can put up with it. And oh wow, I'm putting. Can they shoot you up, up with cortisone? Uh, no, cortisone won't do anything for it. No? Not for a torn meniscus. A torn meniscus is a torn meniscus. It's a it's a it's a. It's a like the. The end it, of the it, muscle or something. It's a tear. I, I don't, it, it attaches. Where I don't know what a meniscus is, but it's fun to say it. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you get it if your nose is stuffed as well. Yeah, right. How do you tear a meniscus? Uh, I tore it by being on the floor in the kitchen, and I guess I had my leg underneath me or something, and I moved it, and it tore the meniscus. And I was in... I'm uh, in. Ab unbelievable pain 
Well, I've had a torn yeah. meniscus for 20 years. You know, uh, I, sometimes it's hard to bend, but other than that, yeah. Well, well, what happened last? What happened is it's been okay. You know, some days it a little hurt, and other days it doesn't. And you know, I it's one of the complaints I can bother girlfriend with. Oh, my meniscus! I can't take the garbage out. I'm having a meniscus attack or whatever. Hey, Patrick, you don't have to worry about a torn meniscus, do you? Well, even no. if he had one, it wouldn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, my but, daughter has a dead guy's meniscus in his, in her knee. Uh, she really? Had a, she had a, a, yeah, she had a um, transplant of a uh, meniscus. Yeah, yeah. She played volleyball and kept hitting the ground with the uh, you know with her bare oh, knees. Oh, and, you know, oh told, yeah. Told her, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that sports are really it. sports. They tell me are so good for you. Oh, yeah, you know, are. sports. Go out and do some sports. I mean, girlfriend says to me, "Oh, you know, you don't. You should exercise more." Well, she does, and she's got a horrible back. You know, I mean, I don't exercise, and true to my theory that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. So far, so good. I think uh, I know oh. where I tore my, where I tore mine back in the seventies yeah. when I used to dance. Uh, I used to drop to my knee. Uh, and then in the, in the disco days, you know, I, I would just drop and, uh, and I, I had a move that I did, uh, uh doing that. And I can't remember the, the rest of the move, but I do remember dropping to my knees and I used to do it on a regular basis. Yeah. Phil blame the Bee Gees, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on summer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, knees. I just got mine injected the day before yesterday three times. For, yeah. for, with for what? What's your problem? Uh, I've got a. I've got something going on in there. He doesn't want to deal with, and he said, uh, "Let's try steroids first. So yeah, then, or cortisone uh, or took steroids. Picture, yeah. Took a picture. Yeah, it was a steroid cortisone something or other. Yeah. And then took a picture of my left ankle, which is the one that's got my problem, and he said. Uh, I don't even know what's going on in there. The it's so fucked up that the uh, X-rays won't even show. <laughs> you got wait, wait a minute, you got to know that your doctor must have a problem when he's telling you, "I don't know what's going on there." Well, okay. well I'm no, limping. He's, that's he's, for he's one first thing. First I'm first. limping. No, I but I don't know what's going on don't there. Have scars. Oh, by the way, in case in case you uh, you haven't. Uh, Notice, ladies and gentlemen, the latest theme of this show is Alex Bennett's waiting room. <laughs> and, um, bed you talk. Know, what, whatever. But, uh, yeah. yeah, his words were, uh, it's so fucked up in there, you need a CT so I can cut it apart and look at it. Wow. So, wow. And I had a, a, it fused in 2004, and he says it doesn't even look like it fused. So, yeah. Uh, yes. And for some brutal stuff pretty soon, I think. Yes, Jeff. Jeff. Alex, uh, have they ever looked at doing a less invasive procedure to repair your knee? Well, I, I you know, the, the, you can get these things fixed, okay? But the question about fixing it is that if you fix it, uh, it sometimes it doesn't take, all right? And it and, and sometimes it can even get a little something worse. So it's not something you do until you absolutely go, hey, this I can't I can't bear this anymore. So, well, do it on the other knee, and if it works, then you can do, do uh, it. I should do it on the good knee, and then it, yeah, if it works. <laughs> good, I good thinking, Phil. Good hey, thinking. hey, great minds. But oh, it, it, but what happened was last gone. last night I'm sleeping and all of a sudden in the middle of the night I wake up and my leg is just in dire pain. And what's happened is somehow in my sleep I had turned the knee in a certain way that I then aggravated the meniscus again. And what happens is it hurts and then I've got to take my knee, my kneecap, and move it back into place. It pushes it you out sleep? of place. And Do you then, sleep with a pillow between your knees? Well, I'm going to tonight. <laughs> you know, okay. uh, but I mean, uh, it, it was excruciating when I got up all day long. I've had to walk with a cane in a lot of cases. The worst part is not like when I'm sitting here, eh, you know, but when if I get up from this, when I get up, it's going to sting like a motherfucker for about, oh, about five, ten seconds. And then it's fine. I can walk on it. 
What do they call those things that old people use? That uh, uh, it's a walker. No, uh, it's you know, called somebody the, else's. Uh, called somebody else's shoulder. Yeah, know? well, they, yeah. they got the tennis balls on the legs. And, oh, and oh, yeah, they, I want to get one of those walkers. You know, here's what I don't get about walkers. And when people please answer me this question: Why is it all these old people put these tennis balls? On the bottom of the walker. Now, wait a minute. I'm Let's sure there's... A, well, I'm sure... Let's listen to the expert on things that keep you from falling down. Uh, Patrick? Well, because if you look at the people that have them, yeah, they are pushing the walker as they walk. Mm -hmm. They're picking it up. And on the front of the walker are typically... Rubber, um, rubber feet, so to speak. Well, like and a, yeah. So that they slip. Mm -hmm. And if you if you learn to use a walker in a hospital, they'll show you how to pick it up, walk, pick it up, walk. But a lot of elderly people cannot even do that. So the tennis balls allow them to wheel it. There's a wheel mm -hmm. at the back, and then instead of the, the feet at the front, the balls allowing you to slide across the floor. Well, now, I'm assuming that if you go to, like, the GIMP store, you don't mind me calling it that, do you? If, if, if you're going to... I go all the time. If, <laughs> if, what I call it. If you go to the GIMP store, I don't think they probably have the tennis balls for the bottoms of these things, yes, right? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They do? A GIMP discount they, center. They and, have them and with they, a crisscross uh, cut in them. Oh, so really? Right. Well, why don't the people who make the walkers just put the balls on them in the first place? Why don't the people who sell tennis balls pr provide used ones Wait a minute. We're having, at a we're discount? Ha we're having some slap back. Let me l just lower the audio for a little bit. Now, uh, somebody, somebody's got some sound on somewhere. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see. See? Oh, boy. Uh, and the only one that's new here is Mike. Mike is always technically in proficient. Let me see here. Yeah. Oh boy, we've got it again. Yeah. Okay, I, well, I turned the speakers off. But. Yeah. You turn yeah. the volume to a little bit here. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Now we're fine. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was Kevin. But let's maybe blame Mike Skype. anyway. Yeah, it was probably Skype. <laughs> it was probably Skype, yeah. You know, I'm in a real jerk picture and sound here. Yeah. Well, you, you have some trouble with bandwidth over there, Kevin. Yeah. That's what your problem is. Anyway, yeah. uh, so, so you know, I you know, so I'm, I made an appointment with my physical therapist to have him. Boy, somebody, it, something's going. I think it's Skype. You think it's Skype? Yeah, just turn it down, turn it back up again, see if that. See, what happens when I turn the sound off, folks, here you can see me for a second. You couldn't see me a few minutes ago because the camera blew on me, but now I'm keeping an eye on it so I can fix it. Uh, I, um, uh, I, if I keep the sound down for just a bit, then, uh, then when we come back, yeah, now we're okay. See? Oh, uh, your camera on the Facebook, Alex, is just you. Oh, well, it, it, yeah, okay, but it's not, it, I know. I just turned oh, I me on. it. Yeah, that, I, because I turned on my camera. Oh. So that you could see me while I was t keeping the sound down. Oh, that's that's pretty professional. Can I can I have a full picture of me on my show? Is that a, pos a possibility? No, but sometimes when you do, when you only had the full picture of you, you uh, wanted to know about it since uh, uh, that what that may or may not have been your intention. Here's what I want to ask you guys out there: uh, uh, Would you buy this product? Amazon today announced a whole new system for you getting. Your packages from Amazon. Did you see this really? thing? I saw it. It, it cost uh, what two hundred and forty-five dollars for the kit, and it consists of a lock, and it consists a of a, a, a smart lock, a smart lock on your door for your door, a camera for inside your house. Okay, and what happens is is uh, Amazon has a one-time only code that the that the Amazon delivery person can use to open the door to your apartment when you're not there and leave your packages inside. 
Yeah. Now it's inside deliveries. It seems so the dog that, escapes. It seems that something like I don't know a, an amazing amount of packages every year are stolen from people's front doors. It seems. You know, like- it seems like Amazon wants it more for themselves than they do for reliability. The want it. Why the hell would I want people in my house? Well, no. I mean, but but here's the, here's what I'm saying. You 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 live someplace where when Amazon comes, they may leave the package at your door, right? Yes, they will. Okay. Now, suppose I'm wanting some stuff from Amazon that you have. All I have to do is walk over to your front door while you're at work and grab the package. This but would, then they'll th- send you another one. Yeah. Well, of course they'll send you another that. one, but they probably they're tired of doing that. <laughs> you know? well, that's what I'm saying. This seems more self-serving yeah. than it does a customer thing. Yes, uh, Mike. The only problem with that, with the lock, when they open up that lock, you could have an alarm in your house. That will go off. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> You might have well, an alarm. Uh, yeah, if you have an alarm, you know. Uh, see, that's why that's the only problem I would see with that. The alarm would go off. Yeah. Well, I and, and I th- I didn't get exactly how this works, uh, but somehow they say that the delivery person has a one-time only code they can yeah. use or something. Yeah. And, I, and, and I think lock. on your iPhone, on your iPhone, or preferably your Amazon phone. Uh, you can you can actually see the whole process. You can see your your lobby through this camera that's mounted, so that if the guy tries to steal anything, you can see him doing it. You know. Wait till you have the first rape of uh, of, of a woman in the home or something like that. You know, kind of like Lyft drivers beating each other up and beating up passengers. Now now you'll have Amazon delivery guys. Uh, you know, raping the homeowner's wife or something. Well, I, 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 and, I and I'm beginning to believe because I, I put in like my address to see if it was available at my address and it's not. And I think where it's going to be available is where Amazon delivers. It, people come out to your home from Amazon and deliver rather than UPS because Amazon is starting their own delivery service. To kind of, I guess, cut out UPS, cut out the post office, whatever. And, but right now, they don't have enough of those. But They're where they subsidies. have them, it would be these Amazon people. It would not be, you know, which are I, very, I, I, by I, the I, way, all very tall, muscular women are the Amazon women. Amazons, of, yeah. Yeah. I, I mentioned a few months ago. All look like that. Sarah Huckabee. I, I yeah. read <laughs> article that the government was giving Amazon subsidies that right now they were using with the uh, post office and and UPS, but they, uh, I bet you those subsidies they're going to start using for their own delivery. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I had read an article on GabNet uh, about... Uh, I, I, I uh, think we dissuaded you of the notion that they were getting subsidies. What they were doing is... They were making deals with the post office because for some reason I thought they, the government no, was no no giving- no. We remember you told us that, and then we had to dissuade you of it. That what they were talking about is that Amazon gets a cut and pay for all the stuff they mail. They save money because right. they have a deal with the post office. Because the post office, like any of these other organizations, uh, uh, their, bid for the job. Money? And uh, so, therefore, uh, you know, when Amazon sends something through USPS, it's cheaper than if you and I were to send it by USPS. But why would Amazon want to do it themselves if they've got a deal that's cheaper? I think maybe because it is cheaper for them to do it themselves. It's hard Hmm. to believe, but yeah. You know, I mean, look, Amazon. Infrastructure, hire people, trucks, everything you need. Listen, Amazon constantly does stuff that I say is a mistake, and I've been constantly wrong. They'll probably start delivering food uh, with the same same drivers. Well, when they started, when they went out and got made their own little iPad kind of device, I said they were they were stupid to do that, but theirs sell very well because you get the same amount of uh, of of power and everything from a. Uh, Kindle, except you don't get the uh, you know the uh, the phone company service. It's on yeah, Wi-Fi something. only. But for a hundred and fifty bucks, you get what essentially you have to pay nine hundred for in an iPad. 
That's not a Barnes and Noble thing. I always thought they no, sold those to no. Barnes and Noble. No, that's Barnes and Noble has their own. It's that's not a good. Kindle. No. I, Barnes and Noble's not Kindle. No. What's okay. Barnes and Noble? It's a bookstore. They sell books. Yeah. It's a Kindle. Well, it's a fire. Uh, oh, uh, is that what they sell uh, at Barnes and Noble? No, they don't sell at Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble, I think, have their own device, but. You can get any book at Barnes and Noble on 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 uh, Amazon, and therefore it will play on any Kindle. Yes, uh, right. Patrick. Barnes and Noble had a thing called a Nook. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And that was the, I think it was the size of a small Amazon uh, flyer, or whatever the hell that is, and it's just a reader. That's yeah. all it is. It, 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 the uh, Barnes and Noble Nook is it just an electronic book. I don't think it really does much else. Oh, uh, okay. I always thought that was a Kindle. I, I uh, thanks for telling me. Yeah, it's a Nook and a Kindle Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, yes, Mike. I think Amazon. I don't know, Phil. You have you heard anything? You're supposed to be able to make uh, district uh, office here in Sacramento somewhere. Yeah, uh, well, I think they're looking, uh, and I know that San Francisco wants to persuade them uh, uh, to open it up in the uh, where they got the Candlestick Park knocked down, uh, and uh, there's a couple of other locations, but I know, I, I heard uh, Willie Brown on uh, uh, on uh, this uh, early morning radio show uh, talking about how uh, San Francisco was making a bid for it. And I would imagine other cities as well. Atlanta is uh, the favorite right now, I think. Atlanta? Yeah. Well, uh, there's one place they're putting it yeah, up here. Yeah, that's on the, the, uh, uh, they're putting second it up, headquarters, right? They're putting it up yeah. here on the yeah. East Coast, in which I think they're going to employ 50,000 people. Well, Concord has a naval weapons station, which has now become Concord uh, city of Concord property, and that's one of the other areas that they're uh, talking about putting the Amazon. And if they did that, that would be good for my store. You know, why well, would it be good for your people. store? Mm -hmm. Doing that big of a project comes with a lot of problems too. Yeah, a lot of impact. Yeah, but there's a lot of a lot jobs. of jobs. The good 50, news, 000. Phil, is they're building a big, huge Amazon plant near you. The bad news is they're using parquet floors. <laughs> I sell those too, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it's not so much the floors in the Amazon complex; it's the people that work there that are employed that will have homes and and uh, condos in the area. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, it's amazing, but uh, Amazon is a huge business. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and they're not really a big profit-making business. No, they maybe they? they've yet to make a profit. Yeah, and I was listening to them on uh, MSNBC Money or whatever it was today, and they were, I didn't realize that they were a very low-profit company, if at all. So why is Jeff Bezos worth so much money? He's like that's what I was he, trying to figure he, out. Didn't he? Didn't Steel. he become? Didn't he come yum number one this year or something? Or? Yeah, uh, for a second, I think for about or a no, second. Yeah. Three. But, year or two. but hey, if he's if he if he's vying with Gates for number one, then you yeah. got to say to yourself, on a company that's constantly losing money, yeah. But you know, look at their stock when it first came out. I think it was around five. Was that in like 1995 or six? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, they they said, ah, this is never going to go anywhere. And it was five. Now what is it? A thousand or eight hundred? Yeah, high know. nines, yeah. I nine, yeah. By the way, I got my yearly check from uh, from from Sirius XM. Well, not from them, from Prudential. They mm -hmm. gave me uh, uh, they gave me uh, stock while I was there for a couple of years, and um, uh, it uh, it was completely vested stock, and it was put into a four hundred one k. And now every year I have to sell off a small portion of it. The government yeah. says you can't hold on to your 401k money and just keep it. You got to get rid of it. So today I got a check for um, after taxes, almost $4. Seven, almost 700 bucks. You know that stock goes absolutely nowhere. 
I watch it all the time. Serious stock, but, yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's, like it, yeah, it's, it's gone. It, it's gone. It's cents. it's gone enough where like the amount of money I made last year, I got something like under five hundred dollars, and this year it's a percentage. Yeah, well, maybe you got it early. Yeah, probably. You know, and this year it's like almost seven hundred. So it means that they their stock has gone up. It's just not like it, you know, appreciably should. Old technology. Yeah. It's old technology. That's the funny part about it. It's it's rickety old technology. Yeah. Um, it's an old delivery method. Yeah, it's an like old radio, really. Huh? Like radio, same thing. It's uh, out yeah. of technology. Yeah. It was developed at the time of Sputnik. <laughs> well, no, no. The idea of of of, uh, of of satellite radio was a very modern idea when it was first uh, proposed and put out there, which was in what? Uh, <laughs> Two thousand, I think they got it up and running. Well, right? Didn't the Sputnik have this little ping that it that it did? It was a radio signal yeah, and beep, yeah, yeah. beep. Yeah, yeah. You know. So what does that have to do with this? Well, that's, uh, it was a satellite. It was the beginning of uh, a broadcast yeah, radio, I, I, and uh, we used to listen to that ping. It was very popular, and uh, uh, couldn't dance to you, it. it. No, you could dance to it oh, just very right. slowly. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and it wasn't a ping; it was a beep. Yeah, so it's gone up since 2013, about five bucks a share. Oh no, when I when I was there, and the company was close to bankruptcy, okay. Yeah. I was there on that fateful weekend. The stock went down to five cents. Yeah. And if I had bought like, and I could have afforded it, ten thousand dollars worth of shares at five dollars a piece, I'd be a millionaire now. Yeah, well, it's yeah. five fifty six today. It lost sixteen cents. Uh, Chase uh, Bank, huh? When when in two thousand eight, Chase Bank went down to something like five cents, some ridiculous <laughs> low number, and everybody <laughs> walks in the office going, "We should buy Chase. We should buy Chase." None of us. Now they're going under. Yeah, now well, they're going well, under. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, then we started seeing the big banks go under. So you know, I would have had to bought this on a Friday and a Monday. The company was saved by by Mel Carmazan and going to uh, what's his name? Who? Uh, oh, the cable guy. The cable guy, and uh, he saved the company. But had I bought it right then, you know, I could have lost ten thousand dollars, but. Again, I, I could have afforded to lose $10,000. But, man, if I had it today, I mean, well, how many times has it gone up now, you know? Well, for every hundred dollars, for every hundred dollars, that's 20 times. And it's up to, uh, 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 let's say it's up to, to over $5. So that's uh, um, 20, 40, 60, uh, f uh, f uh, 500 times or something. I don't know. An amazing amount. I would yeah. have. I would have done very well. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Just yeah. like everybody, yeah, uh, sitting in the middle of Silicon Valley with all that stuff going on. Yeah, I saw it, and anything. you know, yeah. it was crazy. Me too. I never did anything. <clears throat> never. I watched it all around me, and uh, people no, were no, buying no, more well, that, well, that, that, that was not the fallout that. Uh, uh, I don't think that was the fallout that affected. Uh, that big one, the Silicon Valley thing. Oh, the two thousand. Yeah, meltdown. that was that was before this uh, this thing that happened That's to Sirius. Venture capital money. Sirius XM a, fell. I'll tell you when it fell. Earnings. When it fell was during the uh, uh, savings and loan crisis. Yeah, the 08 stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, no, the, two thousand. No, no. The, the was dot right? com was. It was dot while was I was flying. working there, and I didn't start there to, till two thousand four. <clears throat> So it had to be 2005, 2006, somewhere really? around there. I, I remember there was a big meltdown. So that uh, was in Silicon Valley, and that took place in, uh, in uh, it took place about 1999. Yeah, yeah my, my ex-wife had like $160,000 worth of uh, Microsoft stock, and it ended up being worth about 26000 when it was all done. Yeah, but, but you know, the point I'm making is, is that was that. The, the, yeah. that silicon because there was all that hubris you know where people thought you your pet would actually wait for pet food 
you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was not only that. Uh, they were trade the stocks uh, were overvalued. They were trading at like uh, eighty and a hundred times value, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it caught up. You know, and, and for companies that had never made a penny, mm -hmm. that were existing on venture capital money, and people praying that they would just go public, so that all of a sudden the stock would run up and they could sell it and get out. Uh, I thought that happened around two thousand. It did. It did. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of the companies were splitting. Yeah. And they yeah. had nothing. You I don't mean, see they know they were trading. People they had, they had a foosball people. table and uh and, and a dry cleaning service. Uh yeah. you know, <laughs> and that was it. Everybody yeah. I knew at the time was talking about stocks and trading. Right. Day traders. Everybody's right. trading stocks and, and that's when everybody put a dot com at the end of their name. Yep. Well, 1-800-Flowers.com. Well, yep. you had Pets.com. Did that make it? You had, pet, you had <laughs> Pets.com. And then was, everybody bought houses on that was, and oh, cars. No, which was, and and well, then everything well, blew up and they all walked away and from it. And people well, got you, stock you know, options. And those stock options, they were responsible for the taxes. And then the stock was worth nothing. There was something. I can't yeah. remember what it was. But there were people who... Uh, thought were million, stock. millionaires one day, and the next day they owned the gov owed the government, even though they lost all that money and didn't have a right. penny. They owed them something like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Exactly, a lot of them around here. And I can't remember what the reason was. Uh, they they were given stock as part of their package, um, uh, and, and it was stock they couldn't sell uh, uh, for a certain period of time, and <laughs> then. Yeah, and, and and then when the value dumped, they were still responsible for the value with the stock at the time they were given it, and therefore it was considered income. Oh, really? And, okay. Yeah. 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 It was a capital Screw. gains tax I or bought, something uh, like that. Yeah. Did you, Jeff? I did, but it, but it was it was only the medical companies yeah. because uh, they were customers of mine, and uh, I said, you know. I would talk to the president of the company and say, you know, I'd like to invest some money. And I thought it was really a good idea to have a relationship with him and, and think that, that I'm uh, more interested in his company than myself. And I think, I think it was just a good strategy. Was that because of the guy from Sunbeam uh, Shavers? He says, I'm not only a customer, but I own the company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, here, here was the thing. Happened. What happened to me was that I was w working for uh, Play Incorporated, and uh, they would, you know, they they would pay me a decent wage to do a show every day on the internet, um, and uh, to help kind of run that operation. And um, so I, they, 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 I had two apartments in one building in San Francisco, and so they agreed to pay the rent on the other apartment, the one that I used as an office and a studio. And so I would put out the money, and then they would reimburse me every month, okay? And they would also pay me. Well, all of a sudden, things started going south, and all of a sudden, we weren't getting checks. And in the end, it turned out they owed me $50,000, so, of course, when they went bankrupt, I put in for the $50,000. Of course, the point is, I wasn't, the banks are the first ones to get repaid. There are people who yep. go to the front of the line because they have some kind of specialness about them. And where I was in the back of the line. So I finally settled the $50,000 and I got a check for 300 bucks. Ugh. You know, yeah. well, that was my loss, you know, and I went with licking my balls all the way to, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I, you know, I saw that whole thing happening. And then I went over to CNET and I, 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 I had a front row at CNET, working for CNET, I had a front row seat to the cataclysm, you know, yeah. to, ev to everything that was going on. Uh, I, and, and it was, it was as I reported it every day and as we saw it going on, it got worse and worse and worse. And it got to a point where you could drive down Montgomery Street, which was kind of the business district in San Francisco, and uh, just pick up, you know, 
twelve hundred chairs. Aeron chairs, which were twelve hundred bucks a piece, or beautiful right. desks. They were just sitting on yeah. the on the on the sidewalk. Yeah. Because I, I remember seeing those. Yeah. It was it was a fucking disaster. And I remember I at one point I got I, I the the head of CNET sat down with me and said, Listen, we want us to change your show. And I said, well, the show, my show, is the only show that's getting ratings around here, which was true. They didn't, they didn't even show up in the book. If you didn't get above a point four, you didn't show up in the book. And my show always showed up in the book. It wasn't great, but it showed up in the book. And they said, no, you're, you're, you're too light for us. We want you to get serious because we want to be the place where the the computer business comes to listen, you know, and play to the computer professional. And this is in the midst of all this blowout that's going on in, in, in Silicon Valley. And I looked at this asshole, I wish I could remember his name, and I said, well, if you haven't looked now, I said, there are no internet professionals right now in the business. It's dead, it's gone. So we may as well. We, we they may as well have something to laugh at in the morning rather than all this dismal crap that we're pouring out. A friend of See mine. See you did later, a Bennett. <laughs> yeah. A, a friend of mine did a, a TV show in the same vein as your radio show. Did you remember a guy named Paul Chevette? Uh, and and my other friend, my friend was Paul Schindler, who used to do the uh, commentary at the end. Well, you on, used to have. A, you had a list. Uh, who? Mr. Schindler. He, he walked, oh, he, he, he walked well, with a list. Paul Schindler was the uh, editor of Microsoft's uh, 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 Windows magazine. And uh, uh, he was the uh, guy that would do the 60 seconds at the, at the end of the show. Uh, you know, uh, but anyway, uh, but um, Chevette was the guy that was the head honcho of the show. Do you remember it? It was uh, no, Silicon be Valley. Because, be because I had a better... TV show. It was TV. I had a it bet. Was I did TV. I I won Miami for doing log on TV. It was all about computers every week. Oh, huh. didn't Zenith. know that, did you? No, I didn't know that. It's, you just thought I just got uh, an Emmy out of uh, thin air, of and that was the <laughs> Emmy I deserved. Okay, yeah. that wasn't the sports Emmy I got, which uh, certain people want me to give back. Hey, you know? uh, so what was this log on TV all about? I just said computers. Well, I know, but you know, you know, go into it a little deeper than that. Computers, everything about computers. Yeah. And what I did on the show were these little essays, these little pieces on, you know, anything from hey, the new product that's coming out called DVDs to whatever, and I made people. I, I did. They were very funny, and I, I, I'll tell you, I'll play one some night here on the air, so you can. Yeah, do that. Wasn't it. that like at six o'clock in the morning on Sundays or something? I remember. No, that it now. was. No, it was. At a, I think it was at seven o'clock at night on a, a KGO TV. You know what would be interesting? Is that, yeah. uh, the, no, it wasn't on CNET. It was well, on KGO uh, was TV. KENBR or one one of those radio stations. Nine ten. It was nine ten. I don't remember. KDW. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, the country and, state. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, but the interesting thing that would, if you played that, is the technology is 20, 25 years old. So the things that you were talking about uh, are, are. Oh, if you uh, if you watch if you watch the, uh, I'll play like I'll play capsule. I'll play play a couple of them some night just for the hell yeah, of it. Like a time capsule. You know? it, it, I mean, you know, I'm talking about this new product that's going to revolutionize video called DVDs. Imagine mm -hmm. just on this disc, you'll be able to see, you know, DVDs. Yeah. And I, you know, I did stuff on uh, on all kinds of things, which, you know, by today's standards. And I, and every time I'm doing it, I'm sitting in front of a big tube monitor, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so is Mike. It, 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember those days when I, see when I was working uh, out of the airport for DHL. They sent us in a machine to be shipped to New York, and it was called the facsimile machine. And the thing oh. was about four feet high, three feet wide. We had to crate it up, and they said, this could take your job pretty soon. Next thing you know, fax machine. Yep. 
Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. But anyway, so and I did these reports uh, every week. The show lasted, I can't remember, I think maybe 13 weeks or something, but it was really... Yeah, it was about three months, I think. It was a good little... Oh, no, show. no, I'm talking about CNET. Uh, it was like three months. No, CNET was a lot longer than that. C really? What CNET did was there was a radio station. Uh, I think it had been KABL, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, because it was it was 910... And uh, was it 910 nine, well, was, then it was... K if it wasn't KNBR, it was, uh, oh, what was it, Kevin? You remember. It was KNEW for a while. KNEW, yeah. Well, anyway, one of those two stations, they, what they did is they rented the stick. They did what was called an LMA, in which you, uh, Rob knows about this, you, somebody buys the right to use that transmitter and that frequency, and they pay a rent, literally, to the person who... Who the has licensee. The, the yeah, licensee. Yeah. And so we had it uh, when I was at, uh, at uh, CNET, and I know that it lasted for over a year because I was there for a year. Oh, okay. CNET, CNET made a big mistake by not letting you do the Alex Bennett program because that could have made enough money to keep things afloat. That's how... That's how sports radio in New York got started. But you got to realize, these people at CNET were so big of ego. You know, the very hubris that killed Silicon Valley was endemic yeah. at CNET, okay? Yeah. And a, uh, this yeah. guy I talked to was a fucking asshole. I mean, he was so full of himself that he knew everything yeah. about this. And I tried to tell him, you know, there's a way of doing this so it entertains, and there's a way of doing this so it bores people. I said, you yeah. want to do it so it entertains because nobody ever listens to anything that doesn't entertain them. Even if it's news, they want to be entertained. But they could let you do your old program the way you used to do it on the, with the comedians and all that, and it would have been smart. It's what, it's what UFAN did when they got started. They had IMIS. IMIS here's, an example, here's an example of their format. Oh, several Silicon Valley executives jumped to their death today. Uh, you know, that's... No, no, but I mean, so what, 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 what I did was I, I was asked to come in by uh, a guy who I always see at Costco on the TV sets from CNET for giving reports uh, when they have a, they, the, that loop they run on the TV yeah. sets. I'm trying to remember his name right now. And he called me, he was the program director, and he said, I'd like you to come in and work for us and do a show because we want you to take this format and make it entertaining. So that's what I did. I mean, I, I did exactly what they wanted me to do, and I managed to get ratings out of it. And, you know, I, I still stuck with computers, but we did the stuff like, you know, Wacky Web Wednesday, where we would look at the really weird websites and talk, call the people who run, ran them and things like that. I remember that. And, and uh, occasionally I'd throw a sex one in there just to make it spicy, you know. <laughs> and, and, and people listened to this, you know. And we made jokes about uh, what was happening in Silicon Valley. We had one advertiser. I, this is to show you what they were like at this time. One advertiser who was using our air to recruit people to work for them at their computer company. And you know what their main pitch was? We have dry cleaning on premises. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to make, a, I used to have to read that live. And when I get the dry cleaning on premises, I go, boy, that's really going to make you want to work for these guys. You know, I mean, I would pull stuff like that. I bought off Craigslist a bunch of uh, a bunch of track lights from a company that used to set up the lockers for those dry cleaners uh, at at all the downtown Silicon Valley uh, and San Francisco startups. They would they'd have these lockers and they had they had track lights. They had all sorts of stuff and they had their own little area so that you drop off the dry cleaning and then they, they get it and then they drop it back you know clean. And uh, so I, before they went out of business or as they were going out of business, the guy was selling off all the, all the lighting and I bought it for the store. We used, to, we used to have a studio on 9th Avenue when Live when I first went to Live 105. It was around there. Uh, and, and you know uh, what's in that building now, what that building is? Uh, Twitter? No, it, it, yes. It's Twitter. Yeah. I had an office there years ago on the second floor where the switchboard was when it was the furniture mart. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
Uh, what happened well, was it was the uh, furniture mart when we were there. It's just we were yeah. on the fl ground floor. Well, uh, I, I, my office is on the second floor, and uh, then eventually I started representing a company that was on the seventh floor, but they were out of Holland, and they only needed the place two weeks a year for the markets. So uh, I had a locker in the basement. I would take all their shit. I put it in in the in the basement, and then I set up my carpet stuff. Uh, in, in that office, and I'd have clients come in. I take them to the fifth floor and to all the carpet showrooms, and, and boy, that's, was, it, that's how I operated. <laughs> boy, the grinding halt alarm certainly went on with that story. Anyway, well, hey, you know, it's uh, hey, you got a company in Holland. I take all of their shit, I put it in the basement, and and I set up shop. And they're paying for it fifty two weeks a year, yeah. but they only use it two. Uh, but anyway, so, so I mean, uh, but that whole uh, falling out there in Silicon Valley was one of the biggest disasters I've ever seen. And I was there and I had a front row seat to it because I was at CNET and I was reporting it, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, it was all a, how can I put it? The, it was a whole industry based purely on hubris. And that was the problem with it. You know, uh, a, 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 when a guy could start a company that said he was going to send pet food by, the, by uh, you know, you're going to order pet food online, I went, that's it. You know, no dog wants to wait for his food for was three days. Was that Pets.com or something? That was Pets.com. Do you now, know? they were they, 1200 Folsom Street, and it was a two-story building, and a guy who bought the building out of bankruptcy, I put the carpet in. Well, okay, all right, all right, we don't need to hear your, your, <laughs> well, your, 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 your had... six degrees of separation from Pets.com. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, all their shit was laying around, uh, you know, when the guy bought the building. Yeah, and it what, went I'm into saying, measure. what I'm saying is when they finally went bankrupt and they had to get sold to somebody, the only thing that was saleable to the public was the hand puppet for the dog they were using. You remember that? <laughs> no. And so, yeah, those sock puppets. The sock puppets. So they sold these things online and made them a couple of million bucks selling it online because they had the rights to the sock puppet. Uh, but but that, that was the worst Crazy idea world. of all time. But you could come up with the wackiest idea and say, I'm doing a startup and do an IPO, and all of a sudden, overnight, you're a millionaire. There was yeah, another yeah. place that used to deliver foods, uh, and it, was, it wasn't it was a Safeway thing. Uh, they had these refrigerated trucks. They were in Oakland over uh, near the airport, and, the, and that building also got sold to somebody I know, and I put the carpet in that one. But uh, they had these big refrigerated trucks, and they would, uh, and they would uh, send, uh, you know, you'd order the food online. And uh, I, I can't remember the name of that startup, but I remember the building because I carpeted it, <laughs> you know, after, you know. It wasn't Schwab. Oh, boy. Another, no. another grinding what? halt alarm story. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, let's see here. Anything happening in the news today that we should be? Yeah. What I talked about last night about Hillary and the DNC and uh, the FBI connections. Yes, still no and still no Russian sanctions? Well, maybe there doesn't need to be sanctions. Maybe it was Hillary and the DNC that concocted no, all this. No, I don't think it was. It, you know, what? What? what uh, it, Trump is doing what he always does, and that's trying to divert the, the story away from him. The fact is that all this amounts to was what we call opposition uh, uh, in, intel, okay? Mm -hmm and trying to find out and get stuff on Trump. He was trying to get stuff on Hillary, all right? So, you know, th th this wasn't that unusual or that Machiavellian. The only thing is, I think out of all of that, the biggest piece of news they came up with was is that Trump likes to get peed on. Well, they said that the money that was used, that it was illegal for uh, them to do it, and that... Uh, well, then it was uh, illegal for, for, for Trump to do it against Hillary because they did it against Hillary as well. What do you think? What, did what do, do you against uh, Hillary? Uh, oh, oh, they found, yeah, a, they they found somebody who was, who was very close to the, to the Trump campaign who has now been accused of having been the guy who went to WikiLeaks. Okay, so don't tell me that they weren't doing it too, all right? Okay. Well, you know, so two wrongs don't make a no, right. No, 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 wait a minute. Don't, don't, 
don't excuse it. What I'm saying is you you made the statement, well, what was Trump didn't do anything? And I just said his people just I, today that right. was in the news right. that that happened. Well, uh, yeah. Well, what they're saying is that why don't was you a, just admit that Trump is a motherfucking unhealthy. cocksucker and that he's not worth shit and that he's a fraud and he's never been a million billionaire. Uh, you know, how about that billionaire who's spending 10 million dollars to try to impeach Trump He's running a national campaign, television campaign. Well, which guy is that? Do you know, Tom Steyer? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, um, uh, the guy from um, uh, Gross. porno guy, the porno guy. Um, oh, Larry Flint. Flint. Larry Flint. Larry Flint. Oh, Flint. Oh, no, no, no. Larry, no. Larry Flint yeah. also is running that also. No, Larry, uh, yeah. Yeah. Larry Flint individual. always, Larry, this goes way back. This goes back to Bush as well. Larry Flint has always been, keep, he keeps doing the same thing no. over and over again. He offers a million dollars for anybody that can give him information uh, that say Trump got peed on in Russia. Okay, so no, he says, from what I understand, he's a man of his word. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Brian, oh, Brian, Brian, Brian is talking for the first time tonight. What, Brian? From what I, from what I, I forget where I heard this. I want to say it was, a, it was, I think it was a local host here in Pittsburgh, a guy named Eddie Crow on KDK, who uh, cited an example when he made a previous promise. It wasn't Bush; it might have been some more obscure public official. But he is Larry Flint is a man of his word. He may be many things, many undesirable things, a pervert uh, or whatever you want to call him, uh, whoever you are. But one thing you cannot call him is is a liar and somebody who welches on a bet or welches on. Oh a no, bird. no, he's a very it, Larry's a very honest guy. Look, I'm I'm the first guy to love Larry because Larry used to pay me a thousand dollars a month to do a column for him. You know, so I mean, he was my boss at one time. And uh, while wow. I never had much of an interaction with him, uh, the checks always came, you know, and uh, they were for was the amount before, they were supposed Alex, to be. Alex, was this before or after he got shot and became a parent? Oh, this is way after he got shot. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, for a million dollars, I saw Trump getting peed on. <laughs> yeah, but now you got to prove it. I mean, you have to have the, the, the proof of it, you know. Well, yeah, some of it dribbled on my... On my foot, <laughs> and much like the rest of us, Phil, I'm sure Larry Flint would be born well, able you gotta to detect admit, he was a fraud you, you from a million miles away. With the way that Trump excuses the Russians' behavior, they've got to have something on him, you know. Uh, and I think they've they've got the tapes. I, I Show them the stain on your disco suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you uh, think, Patrick? I, I, Patrick's been quiet. Shoots. Do you think uh, uh, Trump is, poss is a possibility that Trump got peed on by a prostitute in Russia? <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Will you let Patrick talk, please? Oh, oh I didn't what? hear you direct it to Patrick. Yes, I did. Why not? Everybody got their own thing, and... and I mean, hell, if could you have in Russia and he liked it? Yeah. So what? Well, what? here's what the Russians do. They have cameras everywhere, okay? <clears throat> uh, when you, if you're an American and you're in town, they're going to be videotaping you in your hotel room. They're going to be videotaping because at some point they might want to use you. And if they have something on you, you'll keep your mouth shut. And I think that it's very possible that the Russians do have videotape on Donald Trump being pissed on by a hooker uh, that they've used to shut him up and to make him actually excuse the bad behavior of Russia. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking at there, Rob? It looks like you're looking up something. I'm looking for the name of the person who put up the money to put out the campaign, the national campaign to uh, impeach Trump. Oh, okay. It was Tim. It was Tim, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, think had, I think I saw his ad on TV. He had a TV ad. Yeah. Or something yeah, like Tom that. Tom Steyer was the guy on the TV ad. What, yeah. What, what's his name? <laughs> Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer. He's been around. But Larry Flint's the one who says he's going to give him a million, uh, $10 million. 
if anybody has any information to impeach. Yeah, well, he's starting. This guy's starting a peti- started a petition that's uh, impeach or something like that. Dot org. Yeah. Or something. yeah, something like that. Yeah. They want everybody to go sign it. Okay, so uh, uh, you know, but I look, I I don't. I, then the idea of impeaching Trump is uh, is pretty far fetched, because sad. Sad. Uh, what would you say? Sad that it's sad that it's that far fetched because he's a danger. That's correct. And and but and let's just for a moment let's look at the impeachment of uh, of Clinton. How long did that take? Two years. It went on longer than that. I mean, they kept starting yeah. to get him from the very beginning. No, nope. uh, yes, Patrick. He, yes, Patrick. My suggestion is for all the people that want him to be impeached so that they can feel good, get some lube and go masturbate. Because that's about as close as you're going to get to getting him impeached. And that's the only way you're going to feel good about it because just like you said with Clinton, it took forever to get to that point and you know what if it's going to get to the point of impeachment he'll just resign and then it's going to be like having a retrograde ejaculation yes right i have this hide on oh my god oh my god and he he resigns and then they're going to have nothing I, I read that there's a what what, what, that what happens term? when you have a retrograde uh, uh, uh emission is that wenting instead of coming yeah. Uh, but a boom. Uh, I'm thinking Mike Pence would see to that. That it would yeah, be. I, uh, I read that said. they're talking. The Democrats are going to be up like 15 percent in the midterms. Uh, as, as so, if that's the case, uh, you know, the Republican agenda will pretty much be done. And uh, you know, where are you getting your information, Phil? Uh, I, don't know, I read it today. Uh, but uh, if if that's the case, uh, it, it could have also been Bannon saying that. But uh, uh, you know that that means that no legislation will get through after, uh, and a lot of things can be reversed, and uh, you know pretty much just stall Trump and and yeah. do what they need to do. Uh, Patrick, so oh, much. Rob, Rob, and then Patrick. Yep. Sorry, go Rob. ahead, Patrick. Patrick. Oh, and and there again. If, if you are correct with that, um, and God forbid you ask where he got it from, Brian, because that's just crazy talk. Um, if the Democrats do regain control... What can I say? I'm inquisitive. Right. Um, and they do move for impe- impeachment, he'll just resign. Yeah. And you're not going to get the satisfaction of watching him go on trial. I don't well, uh, I, I think, though, if he, does, if he does quit... The object will have been met, which is to get him out of office. Right. But then the, you got Pence. The, the, then, then, you you Pence. Got, then you've got Pence. Pence. And you get your retrograde, uh, retrograde ejaculation because Pence will probably invent a machine being the funny fucker that he is. Yeah. That'll make sure that happens. To, you know. Well, I'll tell you what happens. Especially I'll, gay I'll, men. I'll, I'll tell you what happens. He uh, wants to cure you. Well, he wants to cure you. And if I can cure that. <laughs> I'm sure he'd enjoy it, too. Yeah, because we all we all know being oh come on we know what you've got Brian is a sickness. That's right. You got know? the gay. He's, yeah, yeah he, you've got the gay is what you've got. Touch of the gay. You got a touch of the gay. Give me a couple. Got a touch of, of the uh, brown. Quite Some frankly, to be very honest like, with you, like, Brian, as a hetero American, uh, I just don't understand what you see in cock. But you know. That's your doing, and and well, it depends on what what the uh, what the uh, cock is attached to. That uh, just like you know, you're not attracted to all women. You're not attracted to Hillary Clinton any more than you'd be attracted to a 300 pound heifer. For yeah. fuck's sake, hey, like Rosie O'Donnell. Well, I've never I've never found vaginas particularly uh, attractive, and, and yet I don't Maybe know why all my life though. I don't know why all my life I have sought them out with great ferocity. It, it depends know? the way they shave them. But uh, I mean, they, let's face it. Like doesn't a, a vagina a vagina looks like a wound? You know, mm, some, especially some, once some a month. Fish. You know. Hey, uh, I, 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 hey. By the way, uh, Amy, if you're listening, Renee, if you're listening, it's a joke. 
Uh, really CNN no politics uh, predicts 10 Senate seats most likely to switch parties in 18. Okay, well, so that's, uh, that, that's, that's CNN. That's fake news, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm just giving you the ones that you trust. I, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't trust any of them. Oh, well, then you like Trump. No, uh, uh, no, Trump doesn't trust the ones that disagree with him. He trusts the ones that agree with him. Sometimes. Here's what I don't trust. I don't trust the notion that the Democrats are going to be much better, considering the fact that Tom Perez just got finished uh, purging the Bernie progressives from the DNC um, within the last few weeks in 2018 than they were, you know. Okay, try this one. During uh, Obama's. This is brain. Huffington Post. 2018 midterms looking blue. Just as predicted, Trump uh, would be the Republican nominee before others. Now we're there predicting the Democrats will win the House in 18. Uh, so, and, when, and then, Phil, when you yeah. start bitching that uh, the Democrats aren't, uh, you know, following through on their rhetoric in terms of let's reform or eliminate the Electoral College among, you know, the gerrymandering, let's get rid of the gerrymandering, you know what will happen? I'll agree with you. Because <laughs> I think they're just as guilty. Well, they'll they'll do nothing too, because they're they're part of the swamp, just like the Republicans. Yes, they are. Okay, but now let me let me for a moment uh, mention that um, uh, there's a show on uh, uh, Hulu uh, with uh, Sarah Silverman, uh, and it, it, oddly enough, to what against what uh, Phil maybe is is thinking is uh, is is the uh, is the situation. The fact is that she's been doing pieces where she goes out into the hinterlands and hangs out with people who voted for Trump. Yeah. And it, she doesn't and she's not doesn't make fun of them. She's there to kind of just feel where she has a commonality with them and why they did it and so on. And it's it, it, this week especially was fascinating because she went to a town that 85% of that town voted for Trump. And she started smart. asking people. Very smart. And Very she, wise, she, she asked these people, and she, you know, why. Uh, it, the discussion went from Trump to have you ever shit in your pants? <laughs> in other words, <laughs> she was going for the common touch as well. And uh, they were all telling stories about the time they shit in their pants. Okay. But they were also no. talked about <laughs> Trump. And when asked about Trump in the week past she also went and hung out with a family all weekend who also were trump supporters and the answer you got from these people were and and you know it's it's the naive answer and it's the answer that well i voted for him because i was sick and tired of the same old stuff and he was going to be different right well you know difference doesn't necessarily mean better you know and they don't realize this. And they, 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 you know, it's not like they're now enthusiastic about him or that they ever were enthusiastic about him, but they voted for him because he wasn't Hillary. He wasn't a the numbers, politician. The you know. numbers don't add up, Alex. 37% of the people support uh, Trump. So if that 37% comes out, the, the reason that that was able to win him the election is that the Democrats didn't come out. They thought Hillary had it in the bag. They, well, you know, no, no, but they I don't think I've been, that's, you're not getting the Stop. point that I'm talking but, about. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that, Phil. I'm talking about why people who voted for Trump voted for Trump. Right. I'm not talking about 37% and whatever. I'm talking about she went out and asked people who voted for Trump why they voted for Trump. And the most common answer was, I felt he would be different. One guy said, well, he was a billionaire, so he knows how to handle money, which is another mistake, of course, that you can make. Uh, by that notion, I suppose we should all vote for Mark Cuban next time because he's got more money than Trump. <laughs> or Bill Gates. Although I, I think Cuban might do a good job, but it, that's uh, another story altogether. Well, you missed my point. Uh, which no, you was, missed mine because I wasn't even talking. Uh, no, your 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 point was why do these people vote for Trump? And I'm saying that I don't think uh, I think that he's going to continue to have the same base that voted for him. But 
because of all of this stuff that's going on, I think the Democrats are actually going to come out to the polls this time and uh, try to get their people elected. Uh, I, I think that they see that for them to have their cause, they're going to have to produce. They're going to have to get well, up. I'll, I'll tell you in a moment why Hillary lost. But uh, 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 Patrick? Bill just made me think of something with my own family. Um, there was only one person in my family that voted for Hillary. And there were a couple that voted for Trump. But the majority, and that included my parents, voted for third party. And my family, uh, by and large, is all Democrat. And they did come out and vote, Phil. The thing is, they didn't vote for the Democratic nominee because right. they didn't like Hillary. And the problem, you know, I talked to my parents about this. It was either this week, uh, earlier this week or, or late last week. And one of the overriding factors, aside from they just didn't really trust her, is that they felt that she thought that she was better than those of us here in Wisconsin and the Midwest that she just didn't even bother to show up once she was the nominee. Who's and they, not running well, uh, this time, uh, Patrick? Who's not running? <laughs> Hillary's, okay. Hillary's not running. Right. And, and so, therefore, uh, you're not going to get the third-party poll like you did in the presidential election, and, uh, and you're going to get a lot of people that feel that they want to destroy Trump and bring Trump down. So I think that they may come to the polls. Well, the Democrats have to come up with a good candidate to begin with. And, well, they've got and, their existing candidates. Well, wait a minute. And they're, they're, uh, I can't think of one right now. Well, they're, they're, well, the present senators and so forth, and all they have to do is say, hey, if this guy's a Democrat and that guy's a Republican, I'm going to vote the Democrat. No, no, no even you've if got, he's got a you've got to with You've got to come up with a good candidate. Yes, Brian. Uh, that remark you just made, I can't think of a good candidate. Well, neither can I, but here's the thing. Here's the key differential, I think, and I could be wrong. Uh, we're both, or basically everyone on this panel, including Phil, we follow these developments closer than a majority of Americans do. And when they see someone, even if it is a Tom Perez, another corporate Democrat who isn't Hillary Clinton, they're going to think, well, I don't like Trump any more than I exactly. like Hillary now, so I'm going to vote for this guy or girl, and uh, hopefully they'll bring about the change I'm, I was looking for and say, a Bernie Sanders. Of course, they're going to be dourly disappointed, <laughs> but, you know, their, their <laughs> ignorance is what thing. will, you know, prop up again the Democratic Party. They're well, going to get what they had during George Bush's George W. Bush's administration when uh, when when the House uh, was run by uh, uh, Democrats and uh, uh, I, I, well, no, at least the Senate was the House run by Democrats under George W. Bush. It was some 2006 until uh, until Obama. Until, uh, 08. Yes. Yeah, okay. So for uh, at that point, Bush well, okay. couldn't do anything. All right. Here, 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 here's the point. Uh, you know, uh, first the Democrats have to come up with somebody. Well, the reason why Hillary lost was she was just an unattractive candidate. Yeah. She was just, it, huh? It looked like it looked like she was saying, "It's my turn." Yep. <laughs> you owe me. Yeah. It, it's my turn. Yeah. You owe this bitch. Yeah. Well, they. The Republicans did the same thing when they ran Romney, when they ran McCain, when they ran uh, Dole. Uh, you know, it was their turn. And uh, I guess it wasn't. Yeah. yeah but by the way, we've just been joined by Jack Bishop. It's, it's yes, Patrick. The, the difference, though, Phil, is when the Republicans did that, the Republican Party put those people. And those people like Romney, they didn't put out the... They didn't, it didn't stink the same way as Hillary's, as if Hillary was telling everybody it's my turn. Bob yeah. Bull didn't. Romney didn't. The Republican Party said, okay, Republican, this, this is their turn. Hillary was telling the country, this is my turn. That's what a different one. You know why Bob Dole didn't say it was his turn? He always talked in the third person. He says, it's Bob Dole's turn now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jack, has, Jack has his hand up. Jack. You know, one of the few things that Amy Manleyville and I 
consistently agree upon is that the real difference between liberals, progressives, and Democrats and conservatives... You didn't mention leftists there. All right, leftists. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Come uh, on, all right. <laughs> what now? <laughs> all right. How all about right. aliens? I'm, I'm getting to that. Yeah, just libertarians, too. I'm getting to that. Uh, rightists fall in line. Leftists have to fall in love. Mm. And that's what we saw happen with the turnout. The mainstream Democratic Party just didn't have a candidate that those of us that were on the left of the DNC could get emotionally attached to. They turned out for Obama. He turned out. He turned out voters that had never turned out before. The young voters. They fell in love with him. With his yeah. rhetoric. Yeah. And his eloquence. His manner of speaking. And yeah. His charisma. Uh, they, they, I, I, in 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 Obama, you had what I considered the stealth candidate. Uh. I mean, th this is a candidate who. For all, all intents and purposes, couldn't lose. He had everything going for him. Good-looking yeah, guy. Okay. Uh, 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 had a certain erudition. He was tasteful. Uh, he ran he, a perfect campaign. And he ran a perfect campaign. Yeah. Uh, but, also, but remember this, Phil, and most people have forgotten this. Black voters, myself included, we weren't sure if he was going to get the nomination, let alone... He was going to run. And then we had to begin to believe that he could win. And the night that he won, I called my cousin and I said to him, did you ever think we'd see this in our lifetime? And we both said no. Well, what was marvelous about it was the, the fact that a black father could look at his black kid and say, see, yeah. you know, it can be done. Yeah. But the problem that we ran into was that America suddenly said, look at us, aren't we wonderful? We voted for a black guy. See, we're no longer racist in this country. And that was the big mistake. Yes, uh, Rob has his hand up. Yeah, but, they, but, you know, 100 years from now, it'll be wiped off the books that there was ever a black president because Trump's doing everything he can, even renaming Mount McKinley. Everything he can to turn over everything that Obama did during his eight years. And so someday they'll, they'll even erase him from the from the book. It was a black man president, and it'll be erased from the books. That's yeah, what's going yeah. on. It, 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 I have never seen yeah. such a, a systematic every little thing. What it, what it, what one little well, thing did Obama for, do that they're leaving? First, first of well, all, I'm, I'm, and then I want to go to Kevin because he's got his hand up next. Uh, first of all, the fact is that um, uh, he is trying to do away with everything Obama did, but he does it with a executive order, any one of which can be argued in court. Okay, or over at the next uh, uh, election, uh, 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 Kevin. Well, it also goes to show that with Mr. Trump in the office, anybody can become president, right? <laughs> no shit, even exactly. you. Yeah, well, it wasn't too long ago. I I'll, that I'll, same I'll tell you. Here's the thing. Uh, I I don't know what's going to happen to all these people, but you know they they're going to have this tax revision thing that they're trying to get passed. You know, and, yeah. and they're sugar coating it with double language. And, well, and no, I mean I got a note from my business <laughs> manager today because we've been inquiring about certain things, and he made things abundantly clear. What's going to happen is Obama. For the stupid people out there, not Obama, uh, Trump, for the stupid people out there said, I want to raise the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, minimum tax to start at $24,000. You don't have to pay taxes if you make under $24,000. Well, that sounds really good, doesn't it? But he's doing away with all kinds of deductions that you used to be able to get which would have allowed you to deduct more than that 12000 extra he's giving you. Uh, the new tax code People is going who make to... make $24,000 don't have deductions. Let me, let me, believe me, I'm, all I'm saying to you is that that's where it starts, so that if you make more, you're going to supposedly pay less. 
He's ain't lowering gonna, the tax ain't rate. gonna work that way. I found out he said you can deduct certain kinds of medical expenses and medical insurance and so on. You will not be able to do it under this new code. Okay? It's so even the four hundred one K also. And the, what he's trying to do with the four hundred one K, so that the fact is those people who voted for uh, for uh, Trump are gonna see their tax bill go sky high. Yes, you Jack. Uh, my wife is a CPA. Mm -hmm. She is also a former IRS senior auditor. Mm -hmm. And every morning uh, before she goes off to work, I ask her, well, what did my president do today, dear? Because she catches the early newscast. And she said, well, he's talking about what's going to be the biggest tax hike we have seen in this country in 40 years. Because this is smoke and mirrors, and this is just boondoggery at its uh, at its highest order. Yeah, she said there's no tax cut there for hardly anybody except the millionaires and the billionaires. Kinda, I said, well, make more money, baby. Let's get in that tax bracket. That's like trying to blow somebody so they don't know you're fucking them up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, pretty agile. <laughs> so, Mister. Yeah. Mr. Ben. Uh, yes, Jeff's got his hand up. Yeah, I, from what I understand, these three senators who are definitely against Trump yeah. will not vote for him. Not necessarily. I think that they're looking at, uh, it's not just, they're not happy with Trump. You got McCain, you got Corker, and you got Flake. And uh, they don't right. like McCain, and they're not going to run again, they said. But uh, I don't see them uh, sacrificing the rest of the Republican Party that does want these tax cuts, uh, oh. tax reform. I'm not quite sure how long their terms are, because senators' terms are, uh, what, six two years? Four. Two and four or six, yeah. Oh, six. Six. six years for a senator, for uh, representatives. Well, there's two rep there's two kinds of representatives. One that's two and one that's six, I think. No. No. Not no. It's two years for a or a six year term. Oh. Patrick's right. Yeah. And the three so people I'm talking about are senators. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure when they start and when they have to leave. Well, McCain, McCain, I think, is done in 2018. Blake, I'm not too sure of either. Maybe Blake 2020. Announced, he announced his retirement. Yeah, yeah, he's done in 18 as well. Because the thing oh, that really? I is, he, even though he went out and he, and he talked shit about um, Trump, that, that he's gonna go, he's gonna um, work to the end of his term. Right. So his next year. So he just got. The rest of this year, and then he's not running a re-election campaign. There's somebody already that was going to be running against him. So, so both gonna... Flake and McCain are done in eighteen, then. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. My understanding, yeah. Because in cool. my, Pennsylvania, we've got a senator who's next to whose next re-election is uh, 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 two years separate from the other one. I thought that was the way it was with all states, so that would you know reduce you know. Power vacuums and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. That was wrong. If they vote the way I'm suggesting for the next for this year, there will be no financial benefits from Trump because, he, you know, even though they're fake and all of that kind of stuff, he can't win. Uh, they, let me see here, he, he, to, Jack. To clarify, Brian. Uh, one third of the Senate. Stands for election every two years. Mm. You know? Yes. Yeah, that's okay, that's I, what I. That's what I said. There's a two and a six. No. No. no I didn't say that. No. Uh, eight, House of Representatives eight, serve two. Uh, eight, serve two year terms and are considered for re-election every six. Uh, every 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 even year. Senators, however, serve six year terms and are elected to the Senate. Staggered over even years, that are only uh, only about a third of the Senate is up for re-election at any time. So, how does this work? Uh, House Oh House of Representatives serve two years and are considered yeah. uh, for election every even year. 
and then senators serve six years. Okay. Now, There's uh, another fun, useless fact, real quick, before somebody. Else. Uh, I, I find it, that's how I find out when uh, February has 29 or 28, 28 days. Every presidential election year, every four years, is a leap year. It, it is, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Ain't that some shit? Said the toilet paper to the asshole. Imagine being born on le uh, on the 29th of February. I want to bring up one of the last thing here before we uh, we have to call it. Oh my leg! Uh, uh, before we have to call it uh, 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 quits. Uh, this just <laughs> came through. You know, I mean, it's getting the latest um, uh, game is to see who we can discredit. With being sexual harassing type yeah. people. Oh, oh, I just saw it too. Oh, yes. George H. W. Bush? No, no, no. no. They, yes, they no. came up with George H. W. Bush patting a woman on the ass at like whatever, and telling her 107 or however old he is. But wait a minute, a dirty joke. This is the one for you. Journalist Mark Halpern sexually yep. harassed women while at ABC News. Five women tell CNN. Here we go. He apologized <laughs> for his inappropriate conduct. Now, is is this getting to be too much? I mean, what is do? How do we define harassment? If a woman says she's been harassed, but uh, it, it's well, it, you know, I mean, uh, hey, uh, I can say I've been harassed by Phil for the last. Th four years of this fucking show you know well, one should not be presumptuous because neither none of us know the details of the extent of right. which, what uh, has gone on so until you know six months down the road at least we'll but, have a better but, understanding. but it's but it's amazing how uh, how how all of a sudden everybody gets named in this thing including george bush senior yes well, people strength in numbers i yeah. guess yes that too kevin safety too i'll yeah. tell you that in the corporate world in the, over the last uh, probably 10 years, yeah, they yeah. have gotten so deep into sexual harassment and covering their ass, I had to take, I was a manager, and I had to take a California has, sexual harassment yeah. class every two years, mm -hmm. and it had to be at least two hours long, and then there yeah. was one that went every year for every employee, right? and they go through these scenarios that just set everything up. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, it, you know, I understand. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not for sexual harassment or anything like that, but they line everything out for them to come forward. And, and you can't Well, here, 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 here's the big problem. Reason. Woody Allen said, at times, this is starting to approach a witch hunt. Uh, uh, you yeah. know, I mean, uh, people are being accused of this behavior when it may not have been as, shall we say, aggressive as it appears. And just the accusation alone makes them unemployable. Uh, that, yeah. that becomes like the McCarthy era. We don't want it's that. We want and we want women who truly have been harassed to get their day in court and their due. But on the exactly. other hand, we don't want every woman who decides that there's a payday at, 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 uh, uh, there to get their way. There has to be some vetting of these situations rather than, a, than an auto. Now, see, right exactly now, we're that. automatically going to assume that Mark Halpern is this pervert. There's a bright side to this. What? The bright side is, much like I've been doing for years, it gives you, yeah. in this case, men, the opportunity to be an apathetic asshole right uh, 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 don't say anything to any don't help anybody yeah right only about me 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 uh, exactly. rob quickly and then jack quickly uh, i was gonna say by saying what you said alex uh it's almost like you, you can it be possible that that mark halpern did this yes but just the pure accusation should not make him a pariah uh, what sucks is that it just gets put out there yeah, on the news. Yeah, and 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 you're right. People just assume that he's guilty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, no. and Jack, no Jack. Well, look. Today I learned two things. What did you for, learn? For men with power and money, harass. harass they think it's two words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. And the other thing I learned was. Uh, 
there are just two things that women hate. Being hit on and not being hit on. And by the way, one other thing everybody should learn is it's pronounced harass, not harass. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody. I know you have to go, Jack, so I'll let you just well, drop right out. Well, on the side out. of caution. Don't hit on anybody. Tell them to go fuck themselves if they take a That's fence. right. <laughs> I've never been inappropriate with a woman in my life, but, you know. There was a few poodles. I, I, you know, I mean, you know, I, I would say that any woman who ever had sex with me had low self-esteem, but that was just because they <laughs> fucked me. Uh, well, it was sensual, at least. Phil Meyer, thank you. Rob, always a pleasure. Kevin, wonderful. Uh, uh, Brian, thank you. Uh, Jeff, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, Patrick, love having you on. Uh, 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 Mike, same to you, and and Jack, you better you got to go do a show. I'm gonna. Can he hear me? I'm signing out here, Jack. Everybody, why don't you wave a big, big, juicy goodbye? Okay, there they go. That's the citizens panel, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight. Uh, let me uh, kill my uh, Skype so that Jack can use it. And uh, uh, say good night to uh, to everybody uh, on our on our panel. Uh, we are going to take uh, 22 hours off and be back again tomorrow night. In the meantime, Jack Bishop, along with Amy Manuel, is next over most of the same uh, internet stream, and we'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.